right now on KOMU 8 News First at 5. Policy, politics, income inequality, and a big hike in minimum wage. A big test for President Obama tonight in what could be his last chance for big action. Plus, MU releases a new statement answering some questions about the Sasha Manu Corey investigation. And Missouri covers a lot of miles why MoDOT wants more money. KOMU 8 News First at 5 starts now. Live from Studio 8A, coverage you can count on in high definition. This is KOMU 8 News First at 5. Nobody who works full time uh, and works hard at their job should live in poverty. Opportunities for all. That's the big theme tonight on Capitol Hill. Good afternoon. I'm Brittany Pieper. And I'm Meg McLeod. A big test tonight for President Obama in his fifth State of the Union address. And it could be his last chance for big action. Let's send it straight to NBC's Steve Handelsman in Washington for a preview of the speech. Following President Obama's address, four leaders in the Republican Party will give rebuttal speeches. The official GOP statement will come from Washington Representative Catch McMorris Rogers. The Tea Party response will be given by Utah Senator Mike Lee. Kentucky Senator Rand Paul will also address the president's speech. And Florida Representative Ileana ross Leitonen will respond to Obama's comments in Spanish. You can watch the State of the Union and the Republican response on KOMU 8. Switching to a look at your local politics, Missouri has one of the biggest transportation systems in the country, and it's mostly funded by the taxes you pay at the pump. While you may be paying higher gas prices, MoDOT isn't getting more of your money. KOMU 8's Nick Thompson joins us in Jefferson City to explain why MoDOT says no new money means no more new roads. Also at the Capitol, a state senator is fighting to change the state's execution process. This all as Missouri prepares to execute its third inmate in three months. Senate Democratic leader Jolie Justice introduced legislation Tuesday that would create an 11-member commission for setting a new procedure. Missouri's lethal injection method is the reason for the change. The state had used a three-drug cocktail for executions, but changed that protocol after the drugs became unavailable. Missouri switched to a form of pentobarbital, but refuses to reveal the drug's origins. Now to Jefferson City, where a scary hostage situation unfolded last night, leading to one arrest. It happened here on Hickory Street. A woman knocked on her neighbor's door while bleeding from the mouth. She also had zip ties on her hands and a knife. The woman led police down the street where they found another victim. The male victim was bleeding from his head. Police say two, two male suspects forced entry into the home and struck the male victim in the head several times with a small handgun. The male victim identified one of the suspects who was later arrested. Efforts are still underway to identify the other suspect. And the British royals are being burned for how they manage their money. Today, the Public Accounts Committee in the British Parliament claimed that the Queen's royal household must cut its spending. They say it must also raise money to complete the backlog of property repairs. Members of the committee say the royal household is dipping into reserve funds to pay palace bills. Plus, they say breakfast is the most important meal of the day. What one mid-Missouri school is doing to make sure students get it. The impact of a stroke can be life-changing. Victims face uphill battles every day. How a little exercise and friendship is helping patients on the road to recovery. It would give a whole new meaning to student union. In a historic move, a group of college athletes are seeking labor union representation. It's today's talk and it's coming up next. For the first time, a group of college athletes has asked for representation from a labor union. The president of the National College Players Association filed a petition Tuesday on behalf, on behalf of some of the Northwestern University football players with the National Labor Relations Board. The group will be represented by the United Steelworkers Union, who will not receive union dues from the players. The athletes say they want better concussion and medical protection and to ensure scholarships cover the entire cost of attendance. So, what do you think? Here's a look at some of your Facebook opinions in today's talk. Daryl Smith said, for the amount of revenue that football generates, there should be some type of funding to pay for injuries that are permanent. And Bobby Rennick wrote, 
Union? No. Injury compensation? Yes. Give these kids a union and college football will eventually have nothing to do with college anymore. And Fran Gibney said a union would be fine if it is there to oversee the football operation and rules are being followed relating to equipment and safety while playing the game. The players need to be protected as it is a dangerous sport. Thanks for joining us. Have a great night.